I have an idea and I think it's gonna help us get to an answer to the question, is Mark Forged worth it? Behind me, right over there, is a Mark Forged Mark II. It's 320 on X, 132 on Y, 154 on Z or Z. It'll print Mark Forged materials and it'll also lay in the strand fibers that Mark Forged sells. Now, what do we need? I need a bracket for this, the Varla Eagle Scooter. It's got two 1,000 watt motors, a 40 mile range, 40 miles an hour top speed, and a load capacity that can carry the full Joel. <laughs> That's the print right there. That's the model. That's the bracket that I designed, and I iterated it a few times after some test prints. But in the end, I settled on PLA prints from the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, a PET G print on the Mark III with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, a CF PET G print from the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, and finally, an Onyx print with embedded strand carbon fiber on the Mark Forged Mark II. Installation of the bracket's actually quite simple. It's some quarter 20 screws that are an inch and a half in length, and then it's a smaller quarter 20 screw that the camera attaches to at the end of the bracket. Now let's see how the CF Pet G bracket performs. I know that PET-G isn't as stiff as PLA, but I thought maybe the CF and the PET-G would help. And obviously, as you can see, it didn't. And this is evidenced by the wiggle and the jitter that you see in the footage. This bracket is also an earlier design that wasn't quite as stable. And I'm sure that contributed to some of the, the jitter and the stuff that you see. Now let's see how this PET-G bracket does. Remember, this was printed on the Mark III with a 0.8 millimeter Revo nozzle. So hopefully it's a little bit more stiff. That 0.8 millimeter Revo nozzle really helped increase the stiffness of the PET-G. And I'm willing to bet had I printed with the CF PET-G, it would have shown similar results. There was an issue though, because when I tightened this, I did hear some cracking. And that really takes away some of my confidence in this part long-term. Now it's time for the PLA bracket. And as you can see, I've enlisted the help of my friend Brack from Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Don't point at me there, Buster. This is no longer a bracket, but a bracket. Get it? All right, let's test it. I'm honestly quite shocked at how well this PLA part performed, and there was very little deflection during testing. The deflection was minimal during the trail riding, which I quite honestly wasn't expecting. The part was printed with six perimeters and 25% infill, which I believe did contribute to the stiffness of the part. I did, however, hear cracking on this one when I tightened the screws, and so again, my confidence isn't at 100% for the longevity of this part. Now, finally, it's time to take a look at the bracket made on the Mark Forged machine. And just, wow, it, it's otherworldly how this piece feels. The stiffness is off the charts and there, there's barely any deflection at all. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this. Let's test it. Wow. The Mark Forged part is the stiffest one of all the bunch, and you can tell in the footage there is little to zero deflection when screaming down those trails. I didn't see any jitter in the trees when I look back at the footage, and I actually went down a secondary trail just to see how well it would perform, and it did a great job. Plus, no cracking was heard when I tightened this part. Before we get to the final results and the answer to the question, I just wanna say that I had an amazing time riding the Varla Eagle scooter. It handled well, and even with the full Joel on it, going 30 miles an hour screaming down the road, 
That was a bunch of fun. If you're interested in the Varla One as a scooter for yourself, I'll put a link down in the description. Now, the question, is the Mark Forged worth it? Yes. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Put an asterisk right over there, right after. Yeah, perfect. Whether or not the Mark Forged is worth it really just relies on your use case. The PLA part did fantastic, let's be honest, but there was that creaking sound that I heard when tightening it, and so my confidence in that piece is really diminished over time. I could probably do some more adjustments to the model and the print settings in PLA and come up with a design that I would have more trust in. But again, that's me. That's my use case and what I'm able to accomplish as a maker. Businesses that have to create custom tooling and custom brackets would obviously benefit from a machine that could spit out parts in a material that has embedded strand carbon fiber. There's really no question about that. And with businesses that need that, if they have to do that a lot over time, I would imagine the cost of a Mark Forged machine is minimized because of how they pay it off over time. You know, even as a consumer, while the price of a Mark Forged machine might not be within my budget, the parts that the machine can make sometimes are. As an example, the bracket that I made on the Mark Forged Mark II machine, it was an onyx with strand carbon fiber in a few of the layers to add stiffness. Iger, the Mark Forged program for slicing and printing, put the price of materials at a little more than $51 US. So in the future, something like this, it could be that I prototype the part in PLA and get the fit and finish and look that I want, and then I send the model off to a company such as Engitype, who could then print the part in the materials and the strand fiber that I want on the Mark Forged machines, and then I get exactly what I want, but I didn't have to pay the price of a Mark Forged machine. I think as makers and creators and just people that like to make stuff, we have to remember that, yes, uh, on the consumer side, we have access to a ton of different materials that melt at 300 C and can do all sorts of crazy, amazing things. The practicality of the prints that can come from PLA, ASA, ABS, PETG, PC, and nylon are honestly infinite. But we have to remember, as makers, we have access to services that provide parts from industrial machines. And so we, we can at home make the things in the materials that we have access to. And then if we need something that has to be stronger than what those materials can make, we have to remember that the industrial processes allow us a crazy look at insane materials that offer mechanical properties that we just can't achieve otherwise. This was a bunch of fun going through the experimentation process and iterating on designs and creating stuff. I've rekindled my love of CAD design and just wanting to learn more about it. If you wanna see a tutorial on how I made the bracket, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll be able to put one of those together for you. But in the end, if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for cause you believe in. Test all the things. And as always, high five.